if I were to transform a continuous explanatory and a continuous dependent variable using log transformation, I get direct elasticities, right? So if I regress the log of price as a function of log of square footage, I get 0.84. What does it mean? That for a percentage increase in the square footage of the house, okay, for a percentage increase for the scale in the square footage of the house, the price of the property increases by 0.84%. And this is coming out of the model directly as an elastic elasticity measure. You no longer have to compute elasticity. You just simply log transform your explanatory and dependent variables, especially if they're continuous, and the estimated coefficient would be the est um, um, direct elasticity. A percentage increase in the square footage of the property of the built-up area, my apologies, a square foot percentage increase in the square footage of the built-up area results in 0.84% increase in the price of the housing unit. Very quickly, the relationship between two variables when it's measured as a percentage change, a percentage change in variable X resulting in a percentage change in variable Y is called elasticity. A percentage change in the size of a housing unit resulting in a percentage change in the price of the property, that's elasticity, right? Elasticity could have three types of uh, conditions. If it's between zero and less than one, we say it's inelastic relationship. That is, a percentage change in one variable is resulting in an inelastic increase or decrease in another variable. Right? In this case, in our example, we have 0.84 as the elasticity value, which means that a percentage increase in the size of the housing unit results in 0.84% increase in the price of the housing unit. This is inelastic. If you get the elasticity equals to one, then that is called unit elastic, which is seldom the case that you get exactly one. But if the elasticity value comes out to be greater than one, then you say that, uh, then you interpret it as the relationship is elastic, that is a percentage change in one variable results in more than a percentage change in another variable. So in this case, in our case, where we are looking at the relationship between the size of the house and the property value, if the percentage, one percent change in the size resulted in more than one percent change in the price of the unit, or housing unit, then we would have called it an elastic relationship. But in reality, we have an inelastic relationship. Right. So uh, to give you an example, uh, public transit ridership in North America. Right. The rule of thumb is that it's the relationship is 0.3, negative 0.3. That is, a percentage change, percentage increase in public transit fare is associated with 0.3% decline in the transit ridership in the short run. Right? And elasticity measures and relationships are both short term and long term. Sometimes when the change in price occurs, the short term elasticities are higher because there's a shock value. And then over the, as the time progresses, uh, people tune into uh, you know, their behaviors then conform to the, to the uh, shocks in price. And then you end up getting the same levels of consumption as you did before the price was increased. Right. 